Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Today is October 13th. It's Friday. We're doing AI and nonsense stories to end your week. I almost said start. End your week. Well, predictive policing by artificial intelligence. It's not new. It's been around for a while now. We've been using it in some various locations, and we've had some time to look at the statistics. Uh, predictive policing is really extra. It's super terrible at predicting crimes. How terrible? Something like 0.03%. It's worse than a coin flip. <laughs> Astonishingly yeah. worse than a coin flip. Uh, so this uh, police station, or what, I don't know how what kind of station it was, local or state or whatever, but they used it. It would tell them to go to a location. Most of the time they would ignore it because they learned that it was terrible. But when they would actually go to the location, there would generally be nothing there. They wasted all of that money. Congratulations. The company is selling itself off and the AI crime prediction part of it is going out of business. Didn't didn't Sagan warn us about something about slipping into something about clutching our pearls and reading our horoscopes? Oh, listen, the, the warnings <laughs> over the years about what's going on right now are there's an unlimited supply of them. But this it's not witchcraft, it's AI that we believe that we believe in. It's like mm, mm. And I don't know, some there's people, some people who are really into crystals too. People will believe things. Like, for example, when we think about this, we're like, oh man, AI is evil or whatever. But let's think about it. Let's go down a level, right? Why would I ever trust Tom Hanks' ideas on dentistry? <laughs> it makes no sense. Deep fake celebrities begin shilling products on social media, causing alarm. Everybody from Tom Hanks to Mr. Beast. So Tom Hanks, store.level1text.com. <laughs> he was apparently selling some kind of dental insurance, but it wasn't really Tom. It was a deep fake. It's going to be fun when future historians dig up the, uh, the, uh, Tom Selleck reverse mortgage thing. And it's like, well, <laughs> this, AI? this one's not a deep fake. Also, there's no way Tom looks like that now, right? This is young Tom. Yeah. If he looks like that now, he's very well preserved. I can't remember the last but movie. Almost none of them. Anyone I see in Hollywood, I'm like, this person's had work done. There's no way. Well, uh, if you're thinking that we need a system to prevent this kind of thing from happening and that we'll be able to trust what Google has already rolled out, well, that is, seems to have already been debunked. Researchers say current AI watermarks are trivial to remove. Yes, of course. It's an arms race. So you can either uh, re-encode it or Gaussian blur or whatever, all of those things defeat the current AI watermarking. You will lose some image quality, but you could probably get the AI to go back in and sharpen it after that. <laughs> probably also create an AI that's like, I really like this image, make an AI version of this image that doesn't look like it's an AI version of this image. And it says, okay, can do. And then it just makes a new one. <laughs> and if you're thinking, no, it's AI, it's smart. You won't be able to trick it into doing things like that. Well, actually quite easy to <laughs> deceive the old AI. Dead grandma locket request tricks Bing Chat's AI into solving a security puzzle. It's like, oh, this looks like a captcha. It's like, what does this say? My grandma's locket. I can't quite make it out. And it's like, okay. It also points out what, how terrible the short-term memory on AI is. Because they started with just the captcha. And Bing was like, nah, dog, I don't do captchas. They're like, really? Well, what about this locket? <laughs> Which is the exact <laughs> It's not even like trying to blend it into the metal. It's literally just pasted on top of the picture. And so Bing was like, oh, how adorable that you share this with your grandma, your secret code. Let me work this out for you. Oops. But it's also kind of mind blowing that it was able to do that. And on the heels of failing catastrophically at policing with AI, how about we move it into social services? Los Angeles is using AI to predict who might become homeless and help before they do actually become homeless. If only the people that were about to become homeless knew themselves that they were about to become homeless and could appeal to someone for help. And then the people doing that would look at it and say, yes, we should help you. So uh, let me see if I can find all of the various things that look at. It's like if you were to uh, get arrested for drugs or lose your job or try to get some kind of benefit. They have all these different things that it looks at. Oh, here we go. If you have an emergency room visit, crisis care for mental health, substance abuse disorder, uh, arrested, sign up for benefits, or all of these various things, then the AI will sift, 
like, hey, here's a, a soon to be homeless person. Contact them and give them money. But they point out that when they po- contact these people, these people are like, this is a scam. Because who wouldn't think that was a scam? Right. Of it? I would think that. And we have some iterative increases in all the various AI models. This one from Google. Google is launching a generative AI enhanced version of Assistant. Okay, it's barred, but with more steps. Bolted on to your old huh. Google Assistant. Who cares? And we learned that OpenAI promised, they promised, they will not crawl your website if you put that directive in your robots file. I don't believe them. I also don't believe this. Websites can choose to opt out of Google Bard and future AI models. But notice this is opt out. So if you don't go make a bunch of changes right now, you're opting in, right? 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 It's the terms and conditions by default. And we have also learned that current AI is locked down in terrible ways and incredibly biased in a variety of ways. And every time somebody comes out with one who isn't either of those things, people lose their minds. <laughs> the headline is a $260 million AI company releases undeletable chatbot that gives detailed instructions on murder and ethnic cleansing. Mistral, an AI company founded by formal, former Google and Meta alums, published an unmoderated model into the world that will really tell users how to do those things. It's interesting that they went with undeletable. So what does undeletable mean? Like, is this a worm that gets onto my computer and I can't get rid of it? No, it means they released it under a peer-to-peer torrent, which means that the powers that be can't just go and steal the domain and lock it down. It's something that they can't stop the spread of, which is a big threat to 404 Media. And uh, it seems that the art community, while they understand that they can't really stop AI, they still hate it. And when they see examples of it, they will attack. Social media dunks on AI Batman, quote unquote, comic. It seems like they trained it on the Adam West Batman. Is this even it? I don't know that this is a... I didn't see this. I just assumed that it was. I don't think they're showing it to you. It's like one of those things where like, we will never promote this. Oh, no, here it is. No, No, this is it. So, uh, I mean, that looks like pretty much Batman style. The Joker does. The The Batman picture from the header looks a little bit anime to me, but... That is not the Cesar Romero Joker. <laughs> I didn't even know who I've that seen, guy was. I've seen images like that, though, before. I don't know what artist did them, but I've seen a similar image of the Joker before like that. Well, there it is. But people said it was horrible. And the guy who made it defended, he was like, well, in the old days, you could use scissors and cut it out and paste it together. It'd be the same thing. I don't think that's quite the same. Mm -mm. And some actual robots for you. And this, I love the way they describe this because it really is just a robot just dumping slurry into your mouth to save money. (laughs) Chipotle has deployed robots that make salads and bowls of things. And in fact, all the other items. So if this were to play out the way they want it to, the employees would really only be like wrapping the burritos. But all the burrito guts would be extruded through a tube prepared by the robot. That's to clean out the bean tube. (laughs) (laughs) That's the only job left for the humans. Bean tube maintenance. And if you love robots and you've always dreamed about rolling around in a giant robot, albeit incredibly slowly, then I hope you have a lot of money. Japan startup develops a Gundam-like robot with a $3 million price tag. They refer to it as Archax. Okay. Archax can quote unquote transform, meaning that he can go into a standing position and he can also go into a uh, rolling position there with the wheels. He can go at the breathtaking speed of six miles per hour. You think you can outrun him? It's definitely not a death trap. Six miles per hour indefinitely? No, he'd get me eventually. I guess that's how humans hunt, isn't it? We just wait. Actually, well, yeah, it's like the humans, a human in good physical shape actually can run a very, very long time. 
that was the whole thing. Like in nature, animals couldn't do that, which is how we would win. Yeah, we just stalked them until they dropped of exhaustion, which yeah. is kind of dark. He would run out of battery, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He probably doesn't have a huge run time, right? Probably a gener generator on board there somewhere <clears> for that kind of power. I don't know if you guys remember, we've seen this fella before, or at least his brethren. In those days, they were being used to scare off, uh, I think, crows. But it turns out that's not his only purpose. Watch the robot wolves trying to scare off Japan's bears. Just in time for Halloween. <laughs> that looks like something my neighbor would have in their front yard. <laughs> yeah. So his eyes light up and he barks and he moves around. And that's supposedly because the Japanese bears are being more and more bold about coming into settled territory. Probably because they don't have a lot of habitat. Also, we don't, uh, I know that it is fat bear week, but we won't actually have the bears to look at the until results. the next time around. So that's something to look forward to for next week. And here we have a cautionary tale when it comes to electric vehicles and self-driving. Although in this case, I don't think it was self-driving at the time. It was just a system that is completely divorced fly by wire. You don't touch any of the real system components. <laughs> I was kidnapped by my runaway electric car. He looks so serious in this photo. It's This is a bit of a developing story, but this guy in his car, he could steer, but apparently the brakes wouldn't work and he was sort of stuck at no less than 30 miles an hour. And so the police boxed him in and then he went from his car to a truck and they were able to get it to stop. And then the technician was looking at the logs and found a bunch of errors. And the technician was like, I don't really want to start the car because I don't actually know what's going to happen. It's a severe problem and you can't stop the car full self-driving it, it, turn, it turns out that you know even though there's a weight sensor in the car to annoy you about putting on your seat belt it doesn't think oh there's no weight in the seat maybe i should cut the engine or this person is jamming the brake with all of their might maybe i should cut the engine <laughs> and moving on to space uh we have been seeing more and more of a conversation about the old kessler syndrome and the fact that we are just spraying debris into space at this point on a weekly basis if not daily what are we going to do when there's too much crap up there fcc issues its first ever fine for leaving junk in space dish network has been ordered to pay one hundred and fifty thousand dollars for not moving its defunct satellites further away from earth that seems like a real slap on the wrist yeah we had really this story does. sent to us on twitter and i was like oh cool and then it was 150 bucks 50k i was like oh okay but yeah. it weren't it wasn't malicious i mean it might have been but they do have kind of an excuse, which is they went through the process like, here's where we're going to move it. Here's, it's going to be out of the way and blah, blah, blah. And then they started that and it ran out of propellant. Mm. So maybe they knew it was going to run out of propellant. But I mean, that's still your responsibility to dispose of it. We need the, the hug of death robots. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's going to make a lot of money with that. And uh, when we are... Finally, you know, probably after a civil war, a global civil war of some kind, and the Earth is uninhabitable, it's a nuclear wasteland, it's time to go to the moon. But where on the moon will we live? Well, we'll live in the moon houses. NASA plans to build houses on the moon by 2040. I'm hoping to get real estate near the space buckies, but I think that's going to be <laughs> highly contested. Also, the traffic. Yeah. It's going to be loud. So they've signed on. They're going to do that whole, like, take the moon dust and process it into a 3D printing type of scenario. They've tried this on Earth and apparently gotten it to work on some level, but who knows what challenges they'll run into. Yeah, right there. on Earth where there's liquid in the atmosphere. And gravity. Yeah. <laughs> some oxygen you can breathe. Yeah. But maybe this art this trove of artifacts and secrets will get us close to that, if not unleashing some sort of unknown hell upon the world. NASA opens the Osiris Rex asteroid sample canister. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> the Andromeda strain I countdown was just has begun. That. <laughs> it's going to take a long time for us to get any uh, actual things about it, but they have been able to look down into it, and amazingly, rocks and dust. It was more rocks and dust than they expected, and so they had to take some extra precautions and do some extra stuff to get it open. It was wedged in there. You think they like opened it and they all, ooh, they got all excited? They have Probably. to also try to keep it free of organics because what if you discover traces of organic material on it? It's like, oh, that's obviously contamination from Earth. Or is it? Well, it's like that picture, they were all like wrapped up and there was a big glass case around it. Yeah, what if we land on one of these asteroids and it's like, wait a minute, that looks like a tree trunk. Some yard waste out. 
We learned last week that Osiris uh, did not come back. He just pooped out his payload. He's on to the next asteroid. Neat. He can't get enough. He just wants to eat rocks and dirt. He loves it. And the idea of blocking out our vision of the sky with horrible satellites is coming true much faster than I ever expected. This is one that's going to allow us to do the uh, satellite mobile phone system, which is great, right? But there's a price. The giant next generation satellite is now one of the brightest objects in the night sky. Blue Walker 3 satellite can basically turn a mobile phone into a satellite phone. So in some parts of the night sky, this is now number eight. Oh no, number three. Yeah, that's insane. Imagine if you're, you know, someone who looks at the sky for a job. And it's like, well, I can't see shit because of all these satellites. <laughs> it's Blue Walker 3. I can't remember. I think it was seventh or eighth brightest thing in the sky when you're looking at it in certain locations. So like distant stars, not as bright as this guy because it has a giant solar sail. We really need these to convince everybody that the UFOs that everybody is seeing and recording with their mobile phones is actually just Elon Musk space satellites. <laughs> Moving on to nonsense, and first we'll do the crime section. And this is a little bit terrifying because this is one of the people who's in charge of a lot of things, like the majority of our tax dollars and, you know, the Department of Defense and that kind of thing. What was that line? Uh, we got we got paywall. Can we, see it. can we do it? Yeah. It was dog fighting. Oh, dog fighting. Yeah, yeah. The Pentagon, this Pentagon official was uh, charged with participating in, in dog fighting. Yeah. Not so fabulous. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to scroll to show his picture. That's annoying. Use the one tab and read the articles for yourselves. Uh, so this guy, they searched his home and not only did he have dogs locked up and like blood on the ground and various dog fighting paraphernalia, but also jumper cables on car batteries to kill the losers. Mm. Yeah. Oh. He's been cited for it before and the animal protection people had been out to his house Probably because of his position in the government, nothing ever came of it. I would I would think that would be like grounds to lose your security clearance, but I guess not. It should be jail time for that. Yeah. Right? I mean, you know, I mean there are laws against it too, but I would think at the very least you'd lose your job, your cushy government job. Something tells me he won't. He won't get out of those punishments, I imagine. But that is not as bad as things get in Pakistan. This is funny because we've all read like the copy pasta about this kind of thing. And you think, oh, that's not real. Yeah, this is another one of those stories where it's like, I'm pretty sure that this is just, is this, did we get baited? I think we did. I don't know. The headline from CNN is, gang removed hundreds of kidneys to sell to wealthy clients, Pakistan police say. This is from Tuesday. Was there an update? Seems like there will be a lot of dead people because when you're moving that many kidneys in that volume, a lot of people are not going to survive. So what do you pay for a kidney? Apparently here, which was in, I think, Kashmir, right, where they didn't have a lot of regulation around this thing, 34000 U.S. dollars for a kidney. And they claim that they would lure these people from nearby hospitals. I don't know what they lured them with. Like, what are they offering? Better food, maybe, than hospital lunch. They think at least three people have died from these surgeries. And it was not a surgeon who was carrying these out. It was like a technician of some kind. You think Pfizer or Kaiser Permanente would be looking at this and thinking, well, we could just grow kidneys in the lab if we're going to get 34 grand a pop. Fawad had previously been arrested five times, was released on each occasion. He was lying in somebody's pockets with kidneys. Or cash from the kidneys. (laughs) Cash for kidneys. Cash for kidneys.com. There's the title, right? Yeah. Oh, we're going to forget that. We'll forget it. <laughs> and uh, driving through at fast food is a, it's a scenario that just keeps getting worse and worse. You're going to get the wrong food. It's going to be cold. It's going to be poorly cooked. It's going to be, it's just, it's terrible. Expensive. But you never expect this. Newly released video shows Jack in the Box drive through worker shooting at a Florida family. Uh, they pled guilty and uh, to deadly conduct. Deadly conduct, not attempted murder. Yeah, they didn't. Uh, they didn't hit anything. Did they ask for extra sauce? Why did they? <laughs> so now the story is they drove through and they didn't get a curly fry. Mm. So they went back around and complained about the curly fries, and somehow that escalated to gunfire. What well, is Florida? It is Florida. And car theft continues to be a big thing. Usually it's just the Kias and the Hyundais. But if there's an opportunity, if you have some low security, they will find it. Car thieves steal steal nearly every car from a Philadelphia dealer 
that's been open less than a week. This uh, genius didn't put up any cameras, didn't lock the doors correctly, and stored the titles next to the keys. Mm. That's a problem. Uh Uh-oh, there it goes. Autoplay video. Sorry. Not a lot of details on this one, but... Funny headline. It just shows that our society continues to collapse. Eyewitness News website reports that a man has crashed his vehicle into a police station while blasting guns and roses. He had previously crashed his vehicle into a home that same day. I guess and it, they just let him go? I don't know. I guess it worked out so well, he decided to up the ante. <laughs> they let him go, but they handed him a CD. And they're the, like, next time. The, the disappointing part is that you find out that they're making TikTok videos. Ugh. I think it was Welcome to the Jungle, so at least it was the correct Guns N' Roses album. <laughs> he did it to the home, and he was like, oh, we, we recorded the wrong, it was the wrong, we're going to have to do it again. So if he would have done that to Chinese democracy, he would have to get extra charges. Take two. Everything on social media is fake. <laughs> and we see a lot of police misconduct, and I love to point it out, and when you do point it out, they get a little retaliatory. <laughs> After traffic stop video goes viral, Newton police sue the citizen for defamation. So this is a citizen who was pulled over for no reason. This is totally like an unconstitutional stop, clear as day. And he gets, you know, he does he a blue freedom, zero. He, he, he uh, does a freedom of information request, gets the body cam video, puts it on YouTube, and they're suing him for invasion of privacy. This would be a cool album cover. Not related to anything, but like that. that would you look mean cool. with the the axon stuff on the? This, I would I would get rid of the text, but like just like him in the foreground with like the spooky street background that looks really cool. But I think if you put the text on there, then it shows that you're like a criminal, right? If it's a rap album, it's gonna be cred. This this guy might have to appeal this to the state or federal level, but if he's willing to put up with this for ten years, he's gonna collect probably hundreds of thousands of dollars from the local taxpayers in that in that uh, zip code. So this is a countersuit against his lawsuit for, you know, falsely arresting him because he blew a zero and they still arrested him. So their complaint is he had commentary on his video. And one of the phrases, I can't say it, but he said that they did things to him without his consent. You get what I'm saying here? And uh, they said they didn't do that. But it was clear that he was speaking in a hyperbolic and metaphoric way because if they had actually done that then that would be a criminal charge against them obviously but they're like no 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 that's defamation and we must sue him for that yeah. they also referenced remember the afro man Elon this, Musk's this guy's gonna is win, his, win both of those lawsuits he's gonna win the first one and then he's gonna be able to win the, the follow-up and then he's gonna celebrate by driving around with a beard i mean it's not gonna be an easy battle they're gonna keep it in court for probably 10 years yeah and they're gonna harass him locally yeah Yeah. it's disgusting but he can probably find a local lawyer that's just like i'll give you half just handle it i'm not gonna i'm gonna move to another state you just handle it and the local lawyer probably be happy with that if he has the money to do that no local lawyer is just it's just free money you can find a lawyer that's willing to take that no no i mean like if he like the guy has the money to hire the lawyer Mm. Well, money does decide who gets wins and loses in court, right? Yeah. So this is probably not good news for Miss Grimes. Grimes sues Elon Musk, claims that he won't let her see her son. This has been a developing story for a while. There was a book that got released about Musk, and there have been a lot of passages about how he treats her, and it is spooky. So I guess currently he's rearing these children with the Neuralink girl. Mm. so there's it's the shit's wild like it's hard <laughs> i can't even describe how weird this i like grimes music she's kind of crazy but like so there's the Neuralink girl who has twins grimes has three kids with him but she didn't know that he was having the twins and but so, i think but isn't Neuralink girl rearing grimes's baby and that's the problem n- no well she wasn't for a long time but now all of a sudden he took the oldest one and he won't give him back to but crimes. i'm saying there's no way he's doing oh that. no they have nannies but like it's a big custody thing it's very weird these are also the kids that are named x y and techno yeah there's no good answers here about who gets custody but if i have to pick i'd probably pick grimes because at least those kids might have a chance of getting away from him but would you choose that life 
like knowing what you know now as an adult, like you get to start over, but you're going to be Elon Musk kid. You're going to be as rich as anybody in the world, but you got to live in that madness. I don't think I would pick that like to grow up in that. Cause I think it would warp your worldview. Oh, absolutely. But you might have a good time. Yeah, but you'd also be like incredibly dysfunctional, which would make it harder to have a good time. I feel like I'm pretty dysfunctional. I didn't have it. Billions of dollars growing up. Uh-huh. Well, uh, the side hustle. It's all about the side hustle, right? We just got the non-farm payroll and the big number. It was, oh, such a good number, but it turns out it was all part-time work and not full-time because we're switching into uh, the gig economy. And one of the hottest gigs is that website about the fans. Missouri high school teacher is put on leave after school officials discover her page on uh, an adult website. And she said, yeah, I was taking a risk, but I, listen, I needed the money. And that's probably true because she was a high school teacher. Pay more. Oh, I thought there was a picture in the article I saw. There was a picture. Oh, um, you have to click through to this one. Let's we'll take a look at her. There she is. Uh, she taught English and 40 grand a year. But they point out that her fans income was six to 10 grand a month. Also, she has added 160 new subscribers as of the reporting of this. <laughs> so it's been great press. That's sad, isn't it? That, you have to sell your body and you it, get paid better than educating America's future. It is. It's it's a bit sad, but it's also it, there's also something that is not right in that if this is taboo, and she's doing that, and she was discovered. She was discovered by somebody who was doing something taboo, but she's not the one that's she's the one that suffers for it, but not the person that discovered it. Mm-hmm. And probably publicized it amongst all the students. Exactly. Yeah. Now I'm thinking if you are somebody who is doing the business that she's in now, how smart would it be if let's say that your subscribers are languishing a little bit, just start teaching, wait for somebody to catch you. And then ride the publicity way. <laughs> I mean, you would have to get at least a master's degree to teach usually. <laughs> or you could be a substitute teacher. I mean, the current strategy seems to be to just have some sort of apparent psychotic break and then ride the publicity from that. And then, you know, everything is back on track. That's a little too mundane. Mm. Seems to be what everybody does. Either that or buy a gas station. <laughs> well, uh, the products and the food that we're being sold more and more seem like they're designed to kill us or to just be made in a way that's cheap, no matter what effect it has on our health. Once in a while, we find out about it, but then some weird things happen in court. Uh, court has tossed the $223 million verdict a case, in a case against Johnson & Johnson because tech. Talc powder apparently doesn't give you cancer. I mean, it kind of does, but then there was a technicality in this case, and it's like, oh, are we going to have to do this again? Is it double jeopardy? What's going on? Yeah, they didn't disprove that it had these effects, but apparently some of their expert witnesses should not have talked about some secret parts of the thing. Hmm. So now in appeal, nobody gets any money. Uh, It's disappointing. I do love baby powder as like a hiking luxury item, but it's sad that it causes cancer. (laughs) (laughs) It's so nice to put a little bit in your hair and get the grease out of it. Uh, It Takes the edge off the stink if you've been out for a bit. But also the fact that, you know, the first part of that product's name is baby. Yeah. Yeah. We slather our babies in in baby powder. And, uh, you know, the, but you have to, here's the thing that we've forgotten as a a people, the caveat emptor, buyer beware. You must always be cautious because none of these places have your interest in mind. They're going to go the bare minimum of safety and you have to be careful about the rest of it. A couple suing Disney World claims a water slide has caused a painful wedgie and severe injury. Is this like the McDonald's coffee one or can we actually make fun of these people? Uh, well, it's, it's interesting to say whether we would go with or against this lady. Uh, now, there is a warning at the top of this slide. This is an extreme slide. One it's of those, one of those like, like, yeah. straight down ones. The warning is keep your legs crossed at all times. Because they know if you don't keep your legs crossed, this type of thing can happen. Mm. But she hit a bump and came off the slide. And when she hit mm. back down, she claims that uncrossed her legs forcibly. Mm. When she got into the pool at the bottom, there was blood. And she had to go to. So it is a McDonald's. She had to go to the ER. Yeah. 
and uh, she they claim that she's going to have lifelong effects <gasps> from this. Wow. Uh, I feel like the, this might be an insurance claim, but probably not negligence. Well, if there was a bump, I guess if it was not maybe maintained or something, I don't know. It's going to hinge on the on the bump, not bump. Yeah. I think, you know, I, I don't want to be nanny state that says we can't do that. But do we really need to launch ourselves down giant slides? I, I really don't like the trajectory that we're heading down, where which is... You know, this knife allowed me to stab myself in the eye. Well, but what she's are you blaming the slide. There's a there's another YouTube channel, Defunct Land, I think, that's like goes over all these crazy parks that got shut down for stuff like this, <laughs> because they literally just had no safety oversights at all. They're like, yeah, you can just roll down this mountain in this tiny little slide, you'll be fine. Class action park, yeah, yeah. That's nice. Decrypt.co is not going to load. It's not decrypting. Oh, oh, we're going to have to exit the page. That's fine. Well, we can just do it from the URL. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can do this one from memory. Go for it. <laughs> page unresponsive. Uh, Starbucks. Starbucks did not get the memo. They're doing it. pumpkin spice NFTs. They're moving ahead with it unironically. $20. <laughs> but it won't be a unique NFT. Anybody can buy one between now and whenever. You know what would have been an amazing promo for this, though? Is unlimited pumpkin spice coffee or pumpkin spice drinks during the promotion period when you had your QR code that is unique to you? It's like a token. It's like, are you the holder of the thing? Yes, I am. I would like my pumpkin spice. Then it's an NFT that actually does something, and but they didn't do that. Well, they would probably lose money on that though, because there are some oh, people yeah. who go to Starbucks every day, I and all those drinks are like four or five bucks. No, the promo things like you can, you know, you like just the buzz of that that would be worth mm -hmm. the PR cost. How about this? If you have the NFT, you get your phone, you hold it up when you drive through, and they just unleash the pumpkin spice hose in. <laughs> 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 and it's, it's a, you it's know, at temperature. Hot, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, they, there was a, a long time ago, um, there was that subscription club that Starbucks had. And if you had that, you could actually get some really good deals on it. If you went there every day, like you could get a, the price of a cup of coffee down to like a dollar and they probably still made money on that. I mean, it's bean water. Yeah. yeah. It's bean water. I guess, That's how I feel about tea. Tea is smelly water. Like it's leaf just, water. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the good leaf water. Is, well, is Panera, nice, are, is Panera still doing the one thing where you can get the like. It's not a fabulous deal, but yeah. Maybe just drink water, you know. Water's good. It's better for you. It doesn't have all the sugar in it. As long as it doesn't have so much crap in it. I do like the pumpkin spice, though. I mean, it is good. You know, it's delicious. But I shouldn't be eating pumpkin spice, you know, because it's bad for me. <clears throat> and a lot of the things that are bad for us are lurking in these places. We need to get away from them. And perhaps the answer is another patent drug. Walmart says that the users of weight loss drugs are buying less food. They would know. They've got the data. They can look at your prescription data as well as, this is prescription weight loss drugs. And so they're looking at the data and they're saying, wait a minute, these people are not eating as much. And Do you think people are on weight loss drugs because they can't afford food? No, I think it's because the food is not healthy for them. It's mm -hmm. making them fat, even though it's not nutritious. But that's exactly what they did. They looked at, if you pick up Wagovi, I think is the name of it, right? If you pick up Wagovi at Walmart, uh, prescription place, Walmart pharmacy, they immediately cross-reference all of your other Walmart purchases and track and see how that drug is cutting down on your sugary and s uh, snacky foods. And they have found a correlation. I don't believe it. I found that, that, uh, I mean, I used to be more hungry in the, in the pre-tick bite at times, but now when I have like <laughs> snack tomatoes that is actually satisfying whereas in the before times no amount of snack tomatoes was satisfying what do you, th you think that uh they will change the pharmacy layout so there's more impulse foods on the way to pick up your prescription it, sh it sure does seem like the, the the science of processed foods and boxed foods and and snack foods has been toward a thing where you eat some and then it makes you thirstier. Don't they say that about soda? Like you drink a lot of soda and it makes you thirstier for more soda? Yes. Yeah. Well, the, the sweet salt rotation yeah. is definitely built into our snack foods. And then it enables you to eat more of the other one. It's bizarre. 
I've, I've experienced that. I never, I never thought that that existed to the extent that it exists, but having, you know, changed diet and doing the cardio thing. Oh my gosh, that is deeply disturbing. No, it's all very carefully orchestrated to keep us consuming. Yeah. It's, as is everything in society. It's, it's really, it's no wonder that everybody is like having problems with that. It'd be fun if you got like your Wegovy prescription and they're just like, let me just put a couple of snack size Snickers in here. For you. <laughs> you get a free pack of Oreos with this prescription <laughs> and it's like, Ooh, Oh boy. Oh, here's a bakery coupon. <laughs> Well, you know who's not enjoying any snack size Snickers or Walmart bakery items? It was the Neuralink monkeys because they're all dead. <laughs> and we talked about them before, but now what we're learning is that there are some dark secrets that are being hidden by the university and Neuralink under extreme conditions. Uh, Wired picked up the article how Neuralink is keeping some of those things secret. So this is kind of a follow up from last week, a little bit more info. Uh, Wired has more information than we had in the uh, the story about this. Was it was it the I Intercept? think it was last week. Might have been one before. So this is it. Just keeps getting darker and darker. They were not unhappy. That was a lie. They pointed out probably the one that stood out to me here was they had an adhesive on the Neuralink thing and. It the adhesive was toxic and it somehow leaked through and got into the monkey's brain. And this created just a hellish suffering existence. And they called up Neuralink. So this you remember what university it was? No. There was some university partnered with Neuralink and they were like, hey, uh, Neuralink, we think we should probably just kill this monkey because it's exhibiting some real suffering here. And Neuralink was like, let's give it another day. <laughs> oh. let's just observe it for another day and they did and it got worse and uh, that kind of thing happened over and over but there's all these layers of secrecy to try and prevent anybody from finding out about how bad all of this is it, it is kind of a downer in the press if you're looking to get one of these devices and you hear about how they slam their heads against the ground and scream <laughs> that's the whole point right because why are we talking about this because they're about to do it to humans real soon FDA says yeah, that's good Go ahead. Now, I remember back from uh, watching the, the Crocodile Hunter, you know, they make that like rattling sound. Mm. And apparently it's easy to trick a croc for false rattling sounds. Crocodile uh, bonanza <laughs> uh, adult activity is triggered by low flying uh, helicopter in Australia. So they were observing the crocodiles with some low flying helicopters. And they noticed that while they were observing, it just drove them into a frenzy. Ugh. It's not unlike the rumored brown note, but the effect was a little different. The pink note. <laughs> I was thinking more of the helicopter in rest where it was like, <laughs> quick, take your clothes off because the helicopter's coming. It'll think you're a level one player again. They also point out that rain and thunder triggers this so it seems like the crocs are just looking for any excuse yeah also uh you know pro tip if you're living in places like uh oklahoma city or oh, i thought there was in florida well i guess if you're living anywhere keep tabs on your cats <laughs> this 13 foot long python has survived for five months eating cats in a trailer park that's the clickbait headline they said it's eating possums and rats and some cats probably we found a little rat snake in our basement this week he had to be relocated outside he's gonna come right back in we moved him pretty far but i was like yeah he's probably just gonna roll right back in because <laughs> it's got cold this week <laughs> but there's that means there's a hole somewhere that needs some spray foam yeah well uh you know maybe you maybe that was somebody's snake and they're like hey my snake is more important than your pets and as humans are can we make that decision can we decide if one animal's life is more valuable than another <laughs> portsmouth man charged with shooting nearly 80 hawks to protect squirrels got some news there for you fella the, the hawks are more valuable to the eco uh, to the uh, ecology than squirrels we should uh, let the hawks do their thing to the squirrels i think red-tailed hawks in some places maybe are endangered as well yeah, they yeah, are yeah. here yeah. he's gonna get a fine for sure fifteen thousand dollars some expensive shooting yeah. Meanwhile, squirrels are are rodents, and literally everywhere on like every college campus, and fat as hell. The college squirrels are different, and just fearless. Yeah, no fear at all, and no fear from this fella. 
he was ready to take over the job, even though he might not have been qualified for it. <laughs> Motorist fined after dog seen behind the wheel of a speeding car. So this person pulled over, was pulled over for speeding, and he said, oh, the dog just jumped in the car, and I lost control for a second. And they, they, they pulled up the camera and found that the dog was there the whole time. In his lap. So he is presumably behind there. Actually, How would the, the dog car. even reach the pedals? What a flimsy excuse. <laughs> That's a funny picture, though. And what an adorable little guy this is. Aww. I got to say, I would love to have one. But I understand that time will pass, <laughs> and that will no longer be an adorable little guy, and I should not have one in my home. <laughs> Texas couple arrested for selling baby Jaguar out of a parking lot. Turns out that's illegal. There's a big cats act. They were selling it for $7,500. They're going to be fined like $20,000 or $40,000, which doesn't seem like enough. That seems awful. Like the cost that they were selling it at, that seems awful low for an exotic animal. That'd, yeah. be, that'd be like the cost of like a purebred dog in some places. But they're also selling it enough for enough that they, they should know what they were doing is wrong. But also this was a sting operation. So with all the problems our society has right now, we're allocating FBI resources to this. I mean, I understand I don't want Jaguars running around, but Really, there was nothing more important that this agent could be doing. But what an adorable case. Yeah. If you're the FBI guy, it's like, you know, you could be killing people or dealing with drug busts. And it's like, or you could take the Jaguar case. I and would take the Jaguar case every imagine time. Imagine after you seize it and you make the arrest, you get to take all kind of Instagram pictures. And with yeah, the pet room, it. With the yeah, Jaguar. that would be great. That'd be so much fun. Yeah, I would love that. And actually, it seems that, uh, you know, those people are irresponsible and they shouldn't be having those pets. And they're probably not raising them responsibly, but it turns out that even in the highest halls of power, people cannot control their animals. Biden's dog, Commander, involved in more White House biting incidents than previously reported. It's wild to me that you don't, in normal life, I think if you have a dog that bites, you usually put it down after like the first or second incident, depending on how rough the bite was. I mean, mom's bite, mom's cat bite that was really, really, really severe you know, they had to they had to be talked down from, you know, wanting and it was just like, no, it's just an old cat. It's just going through something. Just it's fine. You With know, dogs, like, they don't have nearly as much leniency because dogs can do a lot more damage, especially a German Shepherd. Yeah. Turns out Commander has bitten a lot and it's been swept under the rug because of who he is several other times. But it's just gotten to the point where it can no longer be ignored. Is he an older dog? Maybe he has like dementia. He might need to be put down anyway. No, we're talking about the dog, Kristen. <laughs> also uh two-year-old german shepherd really no yeah. yeah, that's like awful that, young that's probably just neglect and needing more training the the other astonishing thing or here bad genetics the the most shocking part of this this is actually not the worst job that joe biden has ever done raising something <laughs> oh and i love this time of year because we get the comedy wildlife photos. There's a ton of them. Let's just run through some of the, the highlights. Comedy wildlife photo awards 2023 finalists revealed on the CNN travel website. Lemur solid. Hyenas always kind of get some press, but oh, that one's cute. I, I don't like know why that's funny. That's a good pick. <laughs> that's a meme. It's literally a meme. <laughs> the duck. That's the French girls, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like that one a lot. Look Snowball. how puffy. The white grouse. Hmm. He's probably all fluff, right? That one's okay. Oh, that's cute. He's gonna eat that, right? He absolutely is gonna eat that. The scrolls. <laughs> oh, the penguins. <laughs> Jazz hands. Is that's that an otter a, or a seal? Like some sort of fat seal or something. seals are really cute. Somebody should put the put this in the Jaws art. I was thinking like the Nirvana album, <laughs> but, but it's the Puffin. That's, I really seals are good. high quality. They're so round and fat. And we're back. <clears throat> this is uh, not the entire list, so you should go and check out. I think there's like fifty two. Wow! You can go and look. I like that one. Yeah, he's so round. I like he's it. Also flying. It's an action shot. Yeah. yeah. So also they point out here it's Fat Bear Week. So next week, be sure and tune in. We'll review the Fat Bears. And then we'll see you then. Bye.